Hey, JNM here with a new C++ tutorial. This one is about functions and Lambda expressions. Again, I created a new console project, I called it Lambda. We have this vector of integers like in the previous part. And from this, I want to erase items that meet a certain condition. We have these blocks here to print the items of the vector to the console before and after the erase. And what I want to do now is to write a function to execute this task. This is the general syntax of a function, it has a return type, it has a list of parameters and a function body, the code inside of curly braces. The parameters can be passed by value or by reference. I will explain the difference in the example code. Ok, so let's see by this example how to write a function and how to use it. It has a name, in this case output vector and it has parameters. We don't have to return anything. We just want to output some values, so I set the return type to void, which means no return type. And for the parameters I want to pass a title and the vector to print the items to the console. As I said, the code is inside of the curly braces. But when we pass now a title and our vector to this function, it is passed by value. This means both are copied to the parameters. When a copy is created, it is not the best thing for performance. So what we can do is we can define the parameters as references by using this ampersand. And what we pass now to the function is an alias, a reference to the variable that we pass. But this also means that the variable that we pass to the function is modifiable. So when we change it inside of the function, the original variable is changed as well. If we don't want this, we can use the keyword const and now the parameters are read-only, but they're not copied. Ok, now I go ahead and select this code and move it to the function. You can press Alt and use the up arrow to move it. And the static text before erase, we can replace with the parameter title. This means whatever we pass to the title parameter when we call the function is printed to the console. And for printing the vector items, the parameter vec is used. Ok, now let's call the function. You just type output vector. For the title we use before erase. And the second parameter is the vector. And now we can reuse it. I call again the function output vector. This time I use after erase for the title. And the second parameter is still the vector. Of course we haven't erased anything yet, but let's start it just to see that the function works. Ok, and here we have it before and after erase and all the items of the vector are printed. Alright, and now let's come to erasing items from the vector by using an STL function remove if and lambda expressions. I want to erase items from the vector that have a higher value than 100. In the previous tutorial I showed the erase method of the vector. It has two parameters which are iterators. With that you can define the range of items that you want to erase. For erasing all the items I would use begin and end. But I want to remove items that meet a certain condition. For this purpose there's a nice helper function in the STL which is called remove if. We can use it for the first parameter of the erase function. For this method, again, we have to pass iterators to define again which items we want to take into account for being removed. And I want to loop over all the items of the vector, so I pass begin and end as iterators. And for the third parameter, you can add a condition to define if the current item should be removed or not. And for this, we are going to use a lambda expression. Ok, but first let's have a look what a lambda expression is. Basically, it's again a function that doesn't have a name, it has parameters, an optional return type and a function body, the code. It also has a so-called capture clause, these square brackets, but I'll come to this in a moment. In our example, the parameter is a number, the number that we want to check if it should be removed or not. Therefore, the return type is a boolean, true or false. And in the code, we just return if the number is greater than 100 which can be true or false. The capture clause can be used to pass variables that are defined outside of the scope of the lambda expression. We can use an ampersand 
to capture the necessary variables as references, which means again we could change these inside of the lambda expression, or we use the equal sign to pass the variables by value so we can't change them inside of the lambda code. These are default captures, which try to capture all the variables that are used inside of the lambda function, but what you can do as well is to define the variables explicitly. In our case, this could be a maximum value that we want to use to check if an item should be removed from the vector. But let's program the example, then you can see how this works. Okay, I start with the capture. We start with an empty clause, then the parameter, which is always the current number inside of the vector. For the return type, we can use boolean, but it's optional. C++ is able to deduce this type, depending on the value that we are returning. And now I use an if clause to check if the number is greater than 100. In this case, I return true, and in the other case, in the else case, I return false. And this is all we have to do. Now I format it a bit so that you can read it better. And now start the program to check if it works. And yes, this number here is erased because it is greater than 100. But let's go back to the code and remove some redundant parts. As I said, defining the return type is optional. I remove it. And also this statement could be written in a shorter way. We can just return the evaluation of number greater 100, which is true or false. Okay, that's nice. And now let's say we want to define the condition the upper bound for the items outside of the lambda expression. So I define it here as integer. I set it to, let's say, 60. And now I try to use it inside of the lambda code. And you see it's not possible, it's not inside of the scope. So what we can do is to pass it to the capture clause. I can pass it by value, because I don't want to change it, I just want to use it. And now I start again and you see all items are erased that are greater than 60. As I mentioned, I could also pass the equal sign to the capture. So we don't have to capture max explicitly, it captures all the variables that are needed by value. Or I use the ampersand and then I could change the max variable inside of the lambda expression. And the same could be done like that, pass the max variable as reference. And this also makes it possible to change the max variable inside of the lambda function. Otherwise, when passed by value, this is not possible. Okay guys, this is not a very simple topic. Nevertheless, I hope it was understandable for you. If you liked it and my channel, then don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me as well on my Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Support me by being my patron, this would be great. And I'll see you soon in the next tutorial on JNM.